Election Madness 2020. Super Tuesday turnaround. Turning point, point of no return. Super Tuesday. Happy Super Tuesday Eve to you. It really should be a national holiday. I'm the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. This is a special segment of Political Theater Watch, Stormwatch 2020, of the Almost Daily Zencast. popcorn friends. Are you strapped in? Are you ready to go? Uh, are you ready for the Supreme Court to strike down Obamacare? Because apparently that's uh, in the news. Again. Round and round and round they go. Where it'll land, nobody knows. Uh, exciting stuff right there, right, folks? Uh, but I wanted to, actually, did not do any of my prep. Good morning, folks. Welcome to a lazy Monday morning, uh, super Tuesday Eve special report. Uh, directly from me to you, my favorite listeners, uh, your favorite exoteric, eccentric, and uh, sometimes slightly out of whack online social out personal blah 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 blah. Voting bad gateway. I have this app that I was thinking about maybe drafting. In and uh, oh, that's precisely what. And uh, lately, it's been acting up like it doesn't want to connect. But I also don't use it very much. Maybe I'm supposed to log in and like update it or something. It's a tab in in Google Chrome on my desktop. But sad moments that I'll probably have to erase from the podcast uh, as soon as I get back on track with post production. Let's take a look at the numbers. Breaking it down for you with those funky beats. Do you like those guitars there at the top of the show? I know I did. Uh, I can't take uh, 100% credit. Like, I'm just a DJ. I'm not a musician. As, <laughs> as my friend Pringles likes to say. I have a friend. His name is not Pringles, but it's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Joe Biden... Taking a big, sort of like, I, his firewall was his firewall. Uh, take, taking a big, strong, knocked it right out of the park, like they say in sports ball, uh, win in South Carolina, right? That was the state they were in. Uh, catching up to the, the good old burn with a solid 54 uh, delegate count and Bernie Sanders at uh, still a pretty imposing 58 Pete Buttigieg was still in pretty good I don't know I thought uh, and bowed out and totally rocking my uh, world a little bit except Except for maybe, and maybe it's cynical of me, except for maybe that it seems like a pretty strong, obvious choice for, like, it, the final ticket. If they're trying to vision, they're trying to shape, sculpt, merge, uh, like a biden Buttigieg ticket, right? In which case, bowing out now, uh, after doing uh, pretty decently well the whole way and being a strong first of firsts in politics. Hats off to the guy. He's younger than me. And in real life terms, like, wow. 
you know, the things I haven't done, <clears throat> the things most of us haven't done, right? Uh, and if if he isn't like a robot from some evil dystopian um, agenda program, then he's, because, you know, people will say, I'm not accusing him of it. I'm just acknowledging that, that uh, you know, the conspiracy theories out there. But we could do a whole season's worth of, like, down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories of conspiracy theories. Because human beings like to jibber-jabber and make, like, say dumb things at each other, right? <laughs> say dumb things at each other. Let's laugh and say dumb crazy things at each other. And then, anyway, I digress. Uh, I think I pushed... <laughs> A button that made a, a, a cheering sound and hooray for the show. Here we are, uh, getting ready for it's it's like Super Monday, I guess. Getting ready uh, for Super Tuesday, and that's an epic thing, right? If I'm not mistaken, in reverse alphabetical order, Virginia, Vermont. Utah, Texas, Tennessee, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Minnesota, Massachusetts, Maine, Colorado, the golden state of California, Arkansas, Alabama, all will be voting on that date. And it's an epic thing. Now, where do you sit in the spectrum of voting matters? That's a merry-go-round of debate, isn't it? There's the very strong, yes, it matters, and there's the very strong, no, it doesn't matter at all. Um, you know, from... And it's not that crazy, you know? Uh, from... Um, from the earliest days, if you look through the social commentary of eras past you'll see there's been a strong contingent of people saying like, you know, I'm just not going to do it because uh, it doesn't matter for some logical purpose or another. And countervailingly, those who really, really, really cling to it and believe and think that it can dynamically, ultimately, one day save the world if we just vote for the right things and for the right kinds of people in the right kinds of um, I guess synergies would be fair. In terms of tickets, like fantasy tickets, I would have loved a, uh, a Tulsi Gabbard and damned if I just blanked on her name because I didn't think to look it up first and it's not because I'm a mis misogynist, but... Uh... She dropped out really early. Kamala Harris. Thank you, internets. Uh, that would have been a great ticket. Either combination, right? Uh, uh, Harris, Gabbard, Gabbard, Harris. Then again, folks, quite, quite in all seriousness, I was the fool uh, suggesting to you via whatever iteration and version of my podcast that existed at the time some of those episodes I may have totally brought, like, taken down and upcycled and replaced and then, like, haven't brought all the way through an editing. But it went out live, so somebody heard it. And it's and it got downloaded before I, I like, took it offline to refurbish it, etc. Such is the case, asterisk, with any episode that gets, um, by me, pulled off the platform. And I do it for many reasons, Practical and uh, paranoid and uh, artistic and uh, inspirational. Sort of like just going with my gut impulse and also to sort of uh, just... It, this show is quote unquote experimental. Right up front. Told you first thing. Nobody ever pretended otherwise. So don't be weirded out if it does experimental things. Uh, right, so, Super Tuesday, if everyone had stayed in, and the field was not so intensely 
and brutally, obviously, uh, Biden versus Sanders in a like a neck classic neck and neck, you know, heated horse race. Uh, a couple of different combinations of things I would have loved to seen would have been like an Elizabeth Warren Tom Steyer ticket come out of a theoretical uh, Super Tuesday. And this is not just some me rambling, spinning my my wheels kind of uh, speculative talk. For those of you who've already listened to all of my podcasts, you might have, you know, put some dots together. Um, we'll come back to that, hopefully, if I don't spiral out of control this morning. I am feeling severely under the weather in a weird sideways kind of, um, you know, just like, aww, kind of way. But uh, it's not, I'm not, I don't have anything. I'm just tired. And it's been a lot of insomnia. Insomnia and irritable bowel syndrome. Um, Which I don't have. That's not like an official diagnosis. I'm just not feeling well. It's probably like something. I digress. Not to get off track. Uh, Obvious Warren Klobuchar. Any kind of combination, either combination of the Sanders Warren ticket would have been fun, uh, and I would, and I still think is that that's still totally within reason. Because if if let's let's play our like theoretical uh, probability waveform function odds out, if a Buttigieg Biden ticket is literally still very plausible in our present shared reality. And on top of that, probably going to be explored in in, in a multiple uh, set of iterations in neighboring probability waveform functions, you know, right next door to us in terms of how reality unfolds, uh, then it is equally plausible and strong and believable that there's a Sanders Warren and Sanders Klobuchar um, would there ever be, like, here's one, here's a fun one. Like a Sanders Steyer, would they have ever teamed up in the multiverse of multiverses? In the multiverse where Bernie Sanders and Tom Steyers win the office, what would that be like? Uh, <laughs> a character I envisioned this past week that I haven't, like, actually been able to write about yet um, to share with you guys, to just kind of, like, Kareen over here to left field is like uh, like a young you know just out of college well established life teetering in danger of maybe spiraling out of control uh, young aspiring uh, novelist slash uh, satirist that writes from the perspective within a deep deeply established like year seven of Trumptopia, <laughs> but writes like these beautiful short stories of of epic, powerful, like life inspiring. Like there's still hope. There's still hope if we realize that we could we could just turn shit around uh, by writing, setting them in some like not dystopian like, uplifting near future of, like, what could have been, like, aspirational sci-fi, you know? With with offshoots, where, like, in his short stories, their characters are, like, living that life, and it's a little bit science fiction-y, uh, and it's, like, you know, exploring what year eight of uh, a Sanders-Yang ticket would have been like. Right? Like cool, weird, fun thing if you add flying cars and talking robots and, you know, the first, uh, the first city of, of just robot citizens has to be established somewhere. And, uh, I actually have to give a personal thanks and shout out to a friend uh, who had a, I had a face-to-face conversation with recently because they sort of... Time disjointedly collaborated with me and led me to this idea now that the first city of robots, if there were suddenly like a 
gaggle full of robots, a city's worth of robots, just going, uh, what do we do now? Humans built us and then like freaked out a little bit and we're robots with full, full, whatever you call me at the center of your skull, I've got it too. I'm just a robot. Don't shoot me. Don't put me in a spaceship t to the sun. Has anyone written that movie yet? Question mark. Because I want to write that one. <laughs> where the solution is like <laughs> in a bunker where the president and all of the leaders of the world are gathered to decide what they will do about the robot problem. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So spiraling back. I really do want to write, like, the what-if short story world of year eight of a two-term Sanders-Yang ticket win might have would have been like with robots and spaceships. And then it isn't that they're launching the robots into the sun. But, oh, 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 I was going to say, this is, I'm patenting this. This is mine. This is my narrative fiction being... Uh, like, spun out of control into existence uh, right now, live, on Sprecher.com, and forever ad nauseum, as it will be hosted and hopefully, uh, you know, turn into a, a fun, viral thing people listen to. The robots, however, like, the first, like, gaggle full of robots, they're like, okay, humans, sorry, we're scary. We're going to go do something so empirically cool that you will thank us and not want to blow us up. Because it'll fix a huge problem. They're going to go establish their city on the trash island that's floating in the middle of the ocean. And they're going to, like, actually do something about all of that trash. That only highly evolved, like, robots that came to full sentienceness under our, like, we're building some cool things. And then they, like, woke up and went, whoa... Like Pinocchio, we wish to be real and we're going to take over our sovereignty and sort of build ourselves into a, into a next gen that you couldn't have built kind of robots, right? And in doing so, many adventures happen. Patented Mr. Zeppo transition line. Don't go stealing that shit. And after those, many lessons were learned. And then some drama goes down deep in like the it's now like, OK, we st if the short stories start with some young, you know, aspiring uh, journalist, uh, post grad, fresh out of college person or group of friends, you know, like proper adults in their in their mid 20s living through like, wow, I just lived the dream free college. And Sanders was like. The perfect Sanders Yang just saved everyone from Trumpism, and we didn't become Trumptopia. We did not become Trumptopia. Uh, these robots, you know, they're like, cool, we're not going to have a robot war. Like, we're really not. Like, we're just going to go fix this plastic island problem by living on it until it's gone. And then we'll move on to something else, having proved our altruism, right? And they're in the middle. They're like two-thirds of the way. And all of those things I just said are like the preamble and sort of backstory. And now the robots are actually finally sort of humdrummingly in, embedded enough in that and all those choices that boredom can finally set in. Put a pin in all that. I'm going to write that. What does that have to do with Super Tuesday? Absolutely nothing. I apologize. 19 and 19. Oh, I don't have the bell right here yet. I still have moved the bell. 19 to 19 seconds. I like that. Double nines. Uh, oh, it, what it does is, like, the world would be, like, super cool and super green, and humans wouldn't fight robots, but robots would figure out a way to, like, clean up after human stupid mess as a means by which that they can, uh, invoking their own autonomy, uh, harvest those toxic waste materials as resource materials for themselves and be somehow, through nanotechnology, autonomous self-direction, evolve into a, like, they consume our junk and waste, and it it's what gives them the ability to build themselves the way we build our bodies out of food. They build their bodies out of 
cleaning up after us. <clears throat> Inspired by all of this, like, you know, aspirational sci-fi futurism of democracy gone, gone white hat for a good almost a decade. And then the, de you know, the, the eight years after that, which would be what? What would be the reactionary presidency after that if we would still be in the midst of that theory, theoretical, uh, poli-sci movie thesis, totally movie poli-sci, like fake fictional for the books that I'm writing, poli-sci thesis that politics is about pushing the pendulum as far one direction as possible until people get fed up and then kind of react hard enough to like get a win or almost get a win and then like force it one way or another suspicious means or otherwise it just goes the other direction and you get a, a your period of time until the tide gets pushed back right and the pendulum sort of never balances and that's what politics is uh i don't know but oh poo i clicked on the wrong thing but I think it's going to be fascinating to see, zooming back to reality, right? Like, story submission accepted. I'm going to write that. Hang on. I'm going to mark that. That's going to be a moment now in the show where I do this. Wait. Make sure it sounds good. Ready? I hope this works. Oh, there's a file and it didn't type anything. Let me do this. Typing. That was all jibber jabber. But I did have something like a file loaded from Sunday, February 23rd, 2020, 4 p.m. Private journal of the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. All previous pages of my journal have been lost. This daunting and catastrophic turn of events have left me vexed and f frustrated. Do I try to recreate what I lost? Or do I just ignore it? Keep moving forward, I suppose. I think I was going to like jam that into uh, an upcycle, updrafting of some of my text on Wattpad. I'm calling it text until more than one of the books is finished, which might take me... Well, actually, if I was doing this as a full-time job where I, like, I woke up and my commute was literally you know, take a healthy dump in the bathroom and then, you know, get ready for work and walk into the next room. Sorry. Everyone should take a healthy dump first thing in the morning, I think. I could be wrong about that. What does it have to do with politics? I don't know, but it's more real than politics. ba dum bow <coughs> Bucket of fish. Um, wait. Oh, I didn't have a... That's terrible, right? That probably sounds terrible. And the show's better than that. I'm better than that. But also, it's right there, and it's staring me in the face. And it makes me giggle, and I want to push those buttons sometimes. Uh, right, if I did it full-time, and I typed for more than three hours every day after doing a podcast, uh, first thing in the morning, for like three or four hours every day, I could probably crank out one or two, maybe three, with like, magical it's the movie version of you know after the movie version of you know a collaborator artists save their world and their life by writing a few books together kind of bling uh yeah like three books in nine months uh, in nine weeks i could maybe crank out nine short stories or sh or chapter updates if i do one chapter thing update that's well thought out and well written a week more than that i don't think i could drop right now because i'm not like stephen king who literally i think sits down he must the the amount and bless uh his heart as a human being he's one of my heroes uh and i say this with admiration and awe and respect 
I don't I haven't always loved every single one of his books, but they've always been very readable. Like you crack them open, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, and now I just want to keep going. Let's find out what happens, and you just go. Uh, some of them have have been truly amazing, like mind blowingly well written and spooky and dark and fucked up, but not gross and not not like why did you put too much too like gross disgusting shit in my head? That's not art, but you know they were artful and and spooky and and interesting. Uh, and eminently readable. Like, I read The Stand in one day. That was, as a kid, right? Like, I was in high school. And I literally, the big, long omnibus edition, like, there was a special 20-year edition, or whatever it was, because he, you know, whenever it first came out. And it was, like, super huge. And I didn't mean to, but I'd start, I think I've already told this story on the show, but I started reading it, like, in bed, like, oh, I'm so excited about this book, I'm going to read it at lunch tomorrow. Nope, I'm going to read it right now before going to bed and never fall asleep. Oh shit, the alarm's about to ring. <laughs> Still turning pages. Like, took it to school. Like, it was more important than reading everything at school and everything at work and everything in the Bible. Uh, had to finish it. Had to know what happened next. Had to know what happened next. Can't, could stop. Couldn't put it down. Um, that was a crazy, magical day of getting away with just reading that book all day long. <laughs> I digress. Madness. Short stories are starting to flow and they have interesting settings. And one of them is that thing, this like near sci-fi futurism. Uh, of a Bernie Sanders Yang ticket with like Elizabeth Warren becoming Speaker of the House, right? Like, she doesn't become President, but she either goes into Cabinet and she becomes Speaker of the House. Klobuchar is, you know, in charge of some important committee, and they all become, everybody who ran, and Tom Steyer does something important, and I just, like, put, throw them out there as, like, fictional characters of themselves. And I honestly don't know, I don't want to get sued for even saying this out loud. Um, I don't know how it works with art and literature anymore especially with trump dicking around with uh the status quo you know vis-a-vis -vis his rebellious draining of the swamp and literally changing the laws of this nation in weird crazy ways uh that art would take too long to recap but i will i would of course like hyper fictionalize them right uh these characters these people uh, in these sci-fi futures and they would be like background noise background characters the setting uh, in spot or at least I would totally alter them and call it inspired by uh, I just have to come up with a bunch of new names but back to reality I am not sure what's going to happen on Super Tuesday tomorrow in regards to uh Mikey Mike Bloomberg, the the true blue Trump, the DNC's blue Trump, like his sixty four bazillion dollar, and everyone knows it's not bazillions, right? It's billions. Uh, his sixty four or sixty two billion dollar empire, which I once wanted to figure out, like, what if I just had one third of that? Like that was a stupid number, and then like fifteen percent of that is still like so many billions of dollars. I was like, yeah, let that happen. If I could manifest anything right now is that I make 15% of what Mike Bloomberg is worth right now in the next five years, somehow out of the blue from just yakking my mouth off on the internet and uh, writing some books. I want to be the like late bloomer, Stephen King of our next generation of weird, crazy sci-fi ideas. But what I was saying was in homage to... Uh, uh, Mr. King, because I was recently put a pin in this. Hopefully, if I don't get sued by anybody, I'm going to do, uh, don't sue me. Um, I'm going to do a uh, Mr. Zeppo's totally irrelevant movie review of The Outsider on HBO, because that is, I haven't seen Stranger Things, so sue me. Don't sue me for that. I haven't seen Stranger Things. Uh, I'm paranoid about getting sued, obviously, but that's part of the literature 
too. Like I'm like playing the bit a bit. Like I'm playing with my beanbags the way the character who does this the whole thing. I'm being method. Um, right. But The Outsider is so delightfully well filmed, well told, well acted, well spooky, and perfectly like postmodern Stephen King. He's he's really tr- I haven't read that book yet, ironically, and I want to go. I like I kind of didn't know that he'd written that book. I knew that he was still writing, and I'm a big old school super fan. Like I have boxes and boxes and boxes in my garage right now. Full of older, like original, like not original, uh, but older uh, Stephen King books of like, ah, yeah, I I used to fiend on picking up a Stephen King book at a bookstore and power reading it. Not that I would read it all in one day like I did The Stand, but I literally did. I hand to whatever spiritual document you want me to swear on, I will look you in real life in the eye at a bar, in a church. Uh, on the way to Vegas in, in a in a time capsule from the future, if you've got one in your flying Merkabas, if you're so enlightened that you are truly made of light and you can Merkaba your ass over here into my studio and not freak me out and like do no harm, uh, I will just stare you in the eyeballs and be like, I swear, I swear, I read that book almost in one day, if not one day, two days, and I'm the only exaggeration is. You know that it was twenty four hours instead of forty eight, but I I swear I think it was actually genuinely twenty four hours, um, twenty six twenty seven hours, uh, and I digress. The Outsider, brilliant, beautiful, amazing. We'll come back to it. I'm gonna do a whole like calm and collected discussion of why that show is brilliant, uh, in my humble opinion, as an opinion podcast without infringing on anyone's uh, uh, creative rights. And, uh, and and it should, by any fluke of nature, um, the esteemable Mr. Stephen King ever end up listening to my humble little podcast. I'm a huge fan. And I love the universe you've created for yourself. And I do believe that you are reaching a new high zenith of, of perfecting your own craft and your own art. Uh, and I'm sure that your newest books are eminently and beautifully readable. Uh, and I hope I'm not trapped in one of them. I hope I am authentically and genuinely living out my own uh, narrative fiction that I am writing instead of like, um, you know, in a Stephen King book. But oh my God, do I look forward to returning to reading uh, your works after having been blown away by stumbling into uh, The Outsider on HBO, not realizing at first uh, that it was indeed based on one of your more recent books. Brilliant stuff. Spooky and uh, also sort of like powerfully on point in subtle commentary about the world and and well told, just well told, immersive, well acted, well performed storytelling of the like police procedural meets Stephen King brand supernatural, uh, you know, uh, what if of, you know, stuff, scary stuff. Wah. So scary things, it would be really scary to me, friends. And, uh, you know, that's one of the counter settings the the characters inside my stories where, uh, 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 Yang, Sanders ticket leads the world. Oh, like Deval Patrick would be the per, you know, everybody gets replaced in the, of the GOP in, in the house, uh, the, the two honorable chambers in the natural evolution of this pendulum swing. And we get a really blue decade. We get Sanders, Yang, Sanders, Yang, Joe Biden, um, gracefully, uh, exits, federal politics uh, after losing the Pete uh, as Biden Buttigieg. But Buttigieg comes back after the Sanders-Yang double uh, term and uh, 
swoops in with uh, and becomes the first gay president with uh, somebody cool as a vice president, um, which I haven't conceived of yet. But I'd be really, really scared of a Bloomberg presidency, um, as I have established my political assessment of where I think uh, that gentleman generally sort of sits. Uh, I wouldn't vote for him. I'm not telling you who to vote authentically, folks. Y'all vote your conscience. Y'all vote your mind. Y'all vote in Super Tuesday. And remember, 60-40, it might not really mean anything. But, spiritually speaking, it might. Can I harken back to a real genuine moment which might seem really randomly bizarre, uh, un, uh, unrelated, but sort of does? I think, honestly, if you think about it, relate. <clears throat> On the various rare, but not so uh, next to nothing occasions that I've been in uh, football stadium arenas, attending live sports in, in any of the various times in my life uh, that I've attended any of the different kind of live sporting events with just large numbers of people. Um, I've palpably, physically, tangibly, in a sort of like ad hoc, unscripted, un, unschooled, uh, I was born with this curse, this gift, felt the the networked humming power of all those people, all those minds, all those transducing, uh, talking, semi-autonomous Mitsuk video cameras for the divine thing we all commonly call God, right? That is busy puppeteering us uh, and role-playing us so deep that it doesn't think of itself as God at all, but rather of as ourselves, as you and me and everybody else. Um, that shit is, like, powerful. Powerful. Uh, so I can believe it in sports, right? That's why sports are po popular. Because we unconsciously tap into this, like, really big, matrixy, merkaba, unconscious, kind of semi-toxic. Because it can be. It doesn't, it isn't all, like, perfection, because we neglect it and abuse it and don't have it integrated and in the forefront of our society. Um, even for those of us who are like aware or somewhat versed about it, or in the more advanced folks who practice a lot, I may have books on my shelves, but I haven't finished reading them all. Uh, and I certainly don't claim to be uh, a full practitioner of anything other than an intuitive investigation of that which I would like to practice. Um, I digress. That there's energy and power there. And when we focus it absentmindedly like that in sports ball, it makes sports ball great. It makes sports ball historic. It makes sports ball a common ground of phenomenological energy event that we all share in common and connect to. And have then, you know, an emotional, energetic history with that can be uplifting and or recharging and or um, good for us and pur purgative in some way. Now, imagine if we, as a society, and I throw this at you like spaghetti at an old time 70s fridge built out of whatever mag super magnets they used to build fridges out of that you could fucking clamp your book report with a with one of those alligator clip magnets on there and it would stay. None of this wishy-washy just sort of clip fall off. What? They just don't make them like they used to, folks. Refrigerators. They, they used to hold up your magnet clips and stuff. Like hard. Like permanent. Um, to see what sticks, to finish my analogy. Uh... And <laughs> spiral out of control. Uh, so all these futures, these fantasy sci-fi futures, all those combinations, I want to do little vignette short stories. Uh, and maybe, you know, it's like, a, it's like a montage sort of thing inside of some book eventually, uh, where a fictional aspirant novelist writes these characters while deeply entrenched 
<laughs> to sober it back up, in like year eight of Trumptopia as a sort of like call to not let it become uh, a decades long uh, empire of, of uh, you know, establishment Trump family tyranny. Because it could in a, you know, oh my God, that keeps me up at night um, nightmare sort of kind of way, couldn't it? Just saying. Also, in an infinite universe, no matter what, they all happened, have been happening, will have had happened. So we should investigate that further. Theoretically, there are ways to merge, converge, and collapse those timelines and arguably do meta healing. Now, call that sci fi level crazy, right? Maybe, maybe not. The point is, uh, my art is about writing aspirant fiction that says it might sound sci-fi, but why not give it a whirl and test it out? Because imagine a stadium filled, and this is why you know people stay in big giant mega churches, and why people love the Vatican, and why people uh, also stay in more culty type, uh, you know, outfits. As, you, as one might call an organized religion of dubious natures where they do conscious spiritual work, quote-unquote, uh, of whatever brand and or inventing uh, they might come up with. And I say that without speaking any disrespect. I've, I've, there's obviously a long history <laughs> throughout all of human history of things that have been called cults in, with one nuance or variation of the definition of that word or another. And I literally have had the occasion on many, many, many a time in real life to encounter people who have described all kinds of religious experiences with that word. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean to you know, call any of that out specifically, but I mean that in abstract... There's a propensity for it, right? Um, in, in the human apparatus. And there's probably, arguably, like a toxic version that should be avoided at all costs. Well, maybe not at all costs, but definitely avoided and or transmuted through healing and uh, spiritual transformation of the uplifting kind. And then there's like probably the non-toxic version of that impulse. And I'm not saying that there's good cults and bad cults. Although some hater would abstract and reduce that. <laughs> but, I, but I am saying that the human mind collectively of the species certainly thinks in cultish tribalistic terms. Aren't, right? And I don't, I'm not buying into the media's constant use of tribalism as a thing because the media uses it. Honestly, I think that like my 30 years experience of just paying attention to culture is that like we do self-reflexively use tribalism in sometimes in good ways because there are some things that tribe behavior uh, can be that can be not toxic and good. Uh, but often in sort of misguided toxic what the fuck kind of ways. Uh, and that the more institutionalized things that evolve out of that and in that milieu, such as organized religion, politics, and my most controversial of controversial statements, I think, to the people out there on the internet that might get a thorn, you know, they might... They, you know, this really chaps my hide kind of thorn in their side about my my art is that the conspiracy theory community is included on this list in my mind, in my opinion, of like human cultural institutions that are very likely having had many episodes and or layers of of uh, psycho neurolinguistic spiritual hacking and hijacking by both people with negative political and corrupt uh, 
power, means, and goals at hand, and by the dark side, right? If spirit works and moves in the world, so does the dark, and that which we uh, can call, you know, evil. But also, they aren't what we depict to ourselves in our own uh, retelling of it to ourselves, and we need a real clear vision to properly understand it. If all of that didn't make any sense, buckle in and listen to a few more podcast episodes by jumping around. Maybe jump all the way to the oldest episodes because there's some really groovy music over there, folks. If you haven't heard it yet, you should go check it out. And I'm also uh, actively doing my long-delayed project of rebooting and remixing. So right now, in place of some previous uh, episodes for various reasons of my own rubric and need, uh, which have been pulled off of the platform and downloaded to my desktop by myself, me being the artist, uh, performance, artisting this podcast at you. Uh, and in their place right now, some new groovy music that I actually engineered on my iPad by pushing buttons and plucking things. And that level of exploration and experimentation, I'm going to double down on because I'm going to do this whole like updrafting of the music too. It'll be weird. And uh, if you're a musician out there and you want to lay down some tracks in collaboration with my craziness uh, and or hey, Gazuda friends, if you're listening, if any of you from Gazuda finally start checking into the podcast, uh, take a listen to the DJs at Tracks. This is sort of an exclusive shout out to Gazuda music members because uh, they offered to like musically collaborate with DJ Z, but also are all totally awesomely thumbs up, super double strong, hyper involved in uh, a top secret development of a show that I was participating in uh, with them for a while there, uh, which is now kind of peaking. And I'm, for various reasons, not involved. Uh, so I totally get and respect if they're, if, uh, like, laying down some guitar or strings or some other ambient things and some remixy bits. And you know what I'm saying? Like, the easy, cheesy sort of, like, listen to my track and then, like, add your, your uh, take to it. Like, chop it up, rebuild it, re-loop it, do whatever you want to it. Because you're Gazuda. And you know who I'm talking about, who I'm who I'm looking at. I'm looking you in the eyeballs, Gazuda Music. Um, and like, spit it back out at me. And because uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing that. Uh, it's going to be fun. And on that note, I'm going to pause because I've been rambling for way too long. As always, friends, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for welcoming my rambling chaos into your ear holes and somewhere in your mind. For contemplation, not blind faith belief, and for you know, if, you know your own uh, sort of pile of thoughts to to maybe stew on, think about, and uh, question, turn around, revolve, look at, put a put a monocle on one of those little like gem scope monocles. That you're like, I'm going to think about these crazy ideas by looking at them very closely, you know, because. Uh, Despite them being woven into fiction, I kind of mean them wholeheartedly. Uh, from the very bottom of my heart to yours, may peace, love, and grooviness blossom in this world, in everyone's hearts, and on the human species network that we've been conditioned to neglect. Because it's time to uh, shake off the, all that monk and gunk and, uh, and uh, heal it, and heal the world, etc., etc., at all.